Hello everyone, my name is Sander Cockert and welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing fantastic. Thank you for joining me here today. And today we're going to be looking at a bunch of benchmarks. I mean, the upcoming videos are basically all going to be benchmarks, but this one in particular, we're going to test the Dell XPS 15 once again for gaming because I've been getting some questions like, hey, but how is the performance when you undervolt? Does it reach its thermal limit? Does it reach its power limit? Does it reach, like, does anything hold it back? So that's what I'm going to be testing today. We're going to be playing The Witcher 3 CSGO for processor intensive work because more frames equals more processor work and Grand Theft Auto 5, which is reasonably well balanced for a laptop such as this. So that's what we're going to be testing today. I'm also going to be showing you my settings and all that. And uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. So why don't we just get started? So before I start conducting my test, I also want you guys to know that I'm going to be testing it with wall power versus battery power and see what the frame rate difference really is. Because some people have always asked that question as well. And well, I'm curious quite myself because even on battery power, I managed to play some pretty demanding games uh, without a hitch. So I'm actually quite kind of curious to see really how far the limits go. So let's start with The Witcher 3, which is one of my personal favorites. And I'm going to open this through Steam. So I have it through GOG, but I've added it as a non-Steam game through Steam. So let's get going. The Witcher at the bottom here. Let's play that and let's see what happens. All right, everyone. So to conduct these tests, I will be gaming from a slight distance. Camera straight in front of the screen. Uh, I don't use any capture software for this because that will just slow the system down. So to make the most fair comparison, the camera is positioned straight in front of the monitor. And you'll be able to see the frame rates up top listed now as 60 FPS. But let's go into our options here. So in our video section here in post-processing actually first, uh, I do disable anti-aliasing because anti-aliasing is the most heavy thing that you can put on any game to make it go ridiculously slow. Other than that, uh, sharpening off. So ambient occlusion set to maximum, depth of field is on, chromatic aberration, vignetting is on, as well as light shafts. So there you go. And then in the graphics itself, I turn VSync on, and that is simply because there is a slight screen tearing on this particular monitor of the Dell XPS uh, that I noticed while playing The Witcher, if it d does manage to pull a lot of frames. But for the sake of testing, we're gonna turn it off so we can see all the frames maximum frames per second of course unlimited first display full h full hd full screen uh hair works i turned that off it made the most difference actually turning that completely off it's a pretty dramatic difference really number of background uh, characters ultra and the rest is set to medium apart from texture quality which just means how, uh, how many textures can be stored in the vram so the more vram you have the higher you can set the texture quality without any hit to performance so i've set that to ultra foliage visibility range is set to high detail level set to high but you could probably figure, fiddle around with a couple of these settings to get them even higher but there we go so let's see if vsync is now off yes and there we go so let's get started so we can see we're hitting 80 frames per second 70 ish frames per second Drop into 60. So we're staying around 60 frames per second at this moment, which is, I mean, for this particular game, very doable. And it doesn't seem to dip below 50 or below 60 just yet. But if you do manage to like go below it, you can just drop the amount of background characters or reduce the detail level a little more. Or the most difference that you'll probably see is in shadows. Reducing those dramatically will have a significant impact as well. But frame rates here are pretty stable. Uh, temperature wise, currently we're hitting a toasty 90 degrees, which is not cool at all. So let's just go and look up a little bit. There you can see. So you can see that currently we are at a toasty 90 degrees, which is even with throttle stop, pretty significant. And currently we are thermal throttling on the first four cores of our processor, which is just not that cool at all. Um, <laughs> but then it suddenly drops and it gets its little dip, but it comes back up again and it just kind of stays there. It keeps doing its thing. You can see that the CPU usage is not even that high. So it is actually not the CPU that's making it that hot because at 40% CPU usage 
we can clearly understand that that is not going to generate that much heat. GPU, on the other hand, well, I'm betting that that is doing pretty worse about now. So let's actually take a good look at, at this. Here we go, GPU temperature. So with the game right open, we have a 74 degrees on the GPU, which, I mean, it's high, but it's nothing major, really. 74 degrees right now. I mean, for the GPU, that's all right. But it seems to cause the most temperature at the CPU. The CPU is not doing much at all, but it's super, super, super hot. So let's go back. Now, there are a couple of things we can probably do to remedy this. And one of them would be to use Dell's power manager. So I'm gonna bring that up right now. While that is loading, yeah, we are hitting a nice four gigahertz on all cores. I mean, that is nothing to scoff at. I mean, for these temperatures, it maintains the temperatures. It is thermal throttling slightly, but it keeps four gigahertz on the CPU, which is actually not that bad in my opinion. So here we have the power management tool and let's go to thermal management and let's put it to cool, which will clock the CPU down just a little bit and it will then continue to blast the CPU with as much air as it possibly can. So now with the game open again. So now with the game open again, we're hitting 48 frames per second because, well, we're, we've switched now to a lower power profile, which will significantly reduce the amount of power that we have available. But let's see if it makes any sort of difference in the temperatures. So let's see. And we now are at a nice 68 degrees. So that makes a huge difference. So the clock down does help. Let's see if it stays there. It seems to stay at 70 degrees. It keeps, it prefers to stay there really, really. I mean, you can see the numbers there. 70 degrees, that's where it just likes to stay in this performance mode. So let's try this on ultra performance and just see what happens. The frame rate we are getting now is back to 60. So the frame rate is back to 60. You can barely see it, but there it is. There we go, 65. So it's a nice stable frame rate while we are not thermal throttling anymore. It stays at 70 and jumps up to 80. So let's go and play a little bit because this static scene is probably not helping much, but let's see. But the CPU is clocked way down. So it's no longer at four gigahertz. It is now at a 2.8, 2.9. And it kind of switches between that 2.7, 2.9. It keeps going between that currently. So you can see here on the little bar over here, the clock speeds. So you can see 2900, but it's clocked to 30 right now, times 30 on the multiplier. And it just kind of switches between that. So it's no longer at the four gigahertz, but then again, it doesn't need to be. It's playing a simple game. It shouldn't have to boost. But keep in mind, this is the Witcher 3. This is a fully sized AAA game that is actually pretty heavy, but we're playing this super smoothly at 60 frames per second. Of course, it doesn't look to you like 60 frames per second right now, but it feels really smooth. It is about as smooth as my PC, honestly, and I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between my PC and this thing. And my PC has a GTX 970, and it plays about the same amount of frames. So, I mean, I'm very, very surprised with this and actually like super happy with the results of this. And the frame rate stays stable. And we're not gonna like 80 degrees right now. What I'm probably most curious about is, uh, man, what was Vault again? Oh yeah, right. There we go. <laughs> What if we go into the city? How about that? But here even, 60 frames per second, 54. Okay, we're starting to see a dip here. But for me, like for the gameplay itself, it feels super smooth. So the Dell XPS does do some things to like smoothen the gameplay out. With some other games where I hit this type of frame rate, when it dip, the second it below 60, I will feel it. But not so much on this system, it seems like. I'm actually not noticing that much of a difference here, really. 
I mean, 60 frames per second still, and we're looking at temperatures of, so 70 degrees is a nice sweet spot, I have to say, for this particular thing. So this is with throttle stop on, keep that in mind. So we're gonna now turn it off, and I'm gonna go into my task manager and just completely shut it down, in fact. And let's see if that makes any sort of a difference. Okay, so 60 frames per second, the core clock 75, it doesn't seem to make a huge difference, honestly, <laughs> or if one at all. So when it comes to gaming, I mean, throttle stop is really, 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 really not necessary. And it seems that we've only been thermal throttling. We have not once hit our power limit, or actually we have. Uh, no, we've had the power limit on every one of them. <laughs> Never mind, it wasn't in red, but yeah, we have hit the power limit on every single one of them. So there you can see that we have hit the power limit on quite a few of them. So power limit of every single one has been hit, which I mean, that's understandable, but we're getting awesome performance numbers here, even if it is toasty, but even now, like now it's perfectly balanced. It's now sitting at a nice 75 degrees and it's not complaining. It's just pumping through and there's like no irregularities that like bump it to 100, 100 uh, degrees in sudden moments. It just stays at the nice 70 degrees. And for the fact, I still know that the GPU is at a similar level right now. I still don't know why Task Manager refuses to show the fact that it is running the GPU. Like for Task Manager right now, GPU is not running at all, but I think because the sensor is being tracked by something else. So GPU temperature is at 973 degrees. So everything is pretty balanced here in The Witcher 3. Everything seems to be really, really balanced. So let's go and jump into another game, shall we? So we have finally loaded into GTA and uh, well, performance wise, I mean, you can definitely not complain. You know, we're hitting uh, 80 frames per second on the highway. I should probably mention, oh, and my rumble on the controller is on. <laughs> I should probably mention the settings first. So let's go to our advanced graphics where everything is turned off. Okay. And in normal graphics, let's see. DirectX 11, Full HD, 60 Hertz, FXAA on, MSAA off. Again, anti-aliasing, most intensive thing that there is. FXAA is the least intensive MSAA that there exists. You could probably set this to 2X with TXAA. We're going to test that right now. V-Sync is off. Population, density, distance scaling, population vari variety is all up to the maximum, but it makes zero difference because we're in online and the testing is concluded in online because nobody plays single player anymore. Plus online is more intensive and a realistic way of looking at the numbers. So shadow quality set to normal, which is the lowest. And that is because shadows are just so intensive in GTA. Shader quality set to the maximum. Uh, texture quality set to the maximum. We have plenty of V, uh, v memory uh, uh, accessible for that. Reflection quality set to normal, although I can bet we can put that to ultra. Uh, we're gonna test out that in just a moment. Reflection quality, yeah, set to normal. MSAA off, water quality high, particles quality high, grass is super intensive, put that to normal. Nvidia PCSS on the soft shadows. Post effects, very high. Uh, you could probably set that to ultra with depth of field turned on, surprisingly. I usually have that off, let's turn that off. Uh, Antiscopic filtering, 16x always, because it makes zero difference on the impact of the performance. Ambient occlusion set to high and tessellation set to high. Actually, put that to very high because it can. Apply changes. And there we go. So, when it comes to performance numbers, so we now have it actually a 2x MSAA, TXAA, and we're at a 60 frames per second right now. So that's actually not that bad. So like I said, yeah, 60 frames per second on a 2X, uh, 2, 2, 2, 2X uh, MSAA, TXAA. Although, I mean, realistically, I mean, now it's dropping to 50, but realistically, I would not just do that on this system simply because it doesn't make much sense to do it because there are gonna be frame drops and when you have MSAA disabled, you can actually catch those little dips and maybe it will result in the lowest of 60 FPS and not go much, much lower than that. We're seeing at 60, 70 on this lovely GTX 1650. 
and it's doing an amazing job. It feels super smooth. It plays very well. It's not, it's a lot like when I play on my PC, there's not that many stutters and all that. And what I'm going to be curious about right now is what if we disconnect the power? So with the Witcher, I didn't test this, but I should do that with GTA. So I disconnected the power just now and I noticed zero difference. Okay, the frame rate is now starting to drop. So there we go. Yeah, I'm starting to notice it. So it goes to 30 frames per second, but it is still playable. It is still playable, but yeah, it just lowers the power draw significantly, super significantly. But 40 frames, 30 frames per second, I mean, it's playable. I mean, for online, I wouldn't recommend it in competitive sake, but it is functional. I'm definitely not complaining. Uh, and if you lock it to 30 frames per second, it will just play like any other console game. Plug it back in and we're straight back at 100 frames per second. <laughs> wow, okay. Why we are suddenly back at 100 frames per second, I don't know. Oh, there we go. The core clocks have suddenly gone to four gigahertz and the regular clocks have all just gone up and it's hitting a 90 degree ceiling and it's now sitting at a lovely 80 degrees and it's kind of staying there again, just like with The Witcher. Again, you can now see these numbers. You're looking at the game. Let's show you these numbers a little bit, at least. Okay, so temperatures we're hitting are pretty high. It's actually, there we go. So temperatures we are hitting are pretty high, not gonna lie, but it is stable and it's within margin of error. I mean, 80 degrees for a laptop and playing games like this is a huge step up from what we had in back in the days when we still had like M GPUs, like mobile GPUs specifically from Nvidia that were just awful compared to what we got these days. I mean, this is a fully blown 1650 in this laptop and it's handling these types of games super well. And remember, this is only a computer that weighs less than two kilos uh, at 1.8 kilos. And it's, I mean, the performance you can cram into such a small space and still have like stable temperatures. I mean, these are stable temperatures. Don't mind me. And it's somehow still keeping at three gigahertz while it really, in my opinion, should be going for the lowest because CPU usage is relatively low. Let's take a look. Let's open up task manager. Let's go to our, look at our CPU usage. So we're at 34%, just like with the Witcher. We're at 34% CPU usage. There's plenty of headroom. So I'm definitely not complaining about that. Now again, would, Throttle stop make any sort of difference? Let's find out. With again, our lovely numbers here at minus 125 on the millivolt on cache as well as CPU. Now let's see what that makes sort of an, if that makes any sort of difference. So I'll just be playing here. You can just look at the numbers. Let's be driving around on the highway and we can see temperatures don't vary much at all. In fact, it's going up. <laughs> Probably because one, throttle stop is also tracking data, which causes more CPU usage. But other than that, I mean, I don't see that much of a benefit when you use throttle stop when you're gaming in these situations. Games these days are pretty stable and I would only see like very old games or something like that to be like pretty unstable when it comes to like handling these kinds of temperatures. But GTA as well stays pretty stable at 80 degrees and it doesn't seem to dip below it. And again, this is on the power uh, ultra performance setting in the Dell perform uh, uh, battery uh, application. Dell power manager, there we go. So just driving along the highway, I mean, it's it stays there at the temperature and the clock speeds stay at around three gigahertz, which is all right. 40% CPU usage using 10 gigabytes of RAM. I mean, there is this really nothing to complain about. This is absolutely nothing to complain about. And the game just plays smoothly. I have not had any dips in performance whatsoever. We're staying at a nice 70 degrees. So let's go and head towards the city and see what happens there. All right then, so almost at the Hydra. I had to release myself, it got pretty stuck there. Frame rate stays very stable, 80 frames per second. I mean, that is nothing to scoff at in this game. Absolutely not. 
Let's actually go into the settings and see what else we can change here. So let's go to graphics and let's take a look here. So reflection quality, I'm gonna turn that up to high because I can. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we are, it made zero difference. Okay, so that's cool. So if that makes zero difference, let's go to graphics again, go to our reflection quality and turn it up to ultra and just see what happens. Oh crap. Ooh. Are we really gonna win? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah with the camera position straight in front of the display it's kind of difficult to read anything but there we go so i mean this is nice 60 frames per second and the quality is really good i mean you can always lower it if you want more frame rates but the temperature stays very stable at 80 degrees so that really doesn't make any sort of difference at all so let's jump into the next game so here we are with csgo settings here are pretty well, not self-explanatory because uh, I have changed a couple of things. So everything is set to high and MSAA is time safe, um, <laughs> which is not realistic at all. So I'm going to put MSAA to none. So disable that completely. See those differences come alive and the frame rate should be even higher than the 100 frames per second that it already is. So let's go and jump into a deathmatch game here on... Mm, I don't want to say dust. Let's go diffuser group sigma. Temperatures here are at a nice 60 degrees, which is really nice. Frame rate 70. Wow, it's actually pretty low. It's actually pretty darn low. Hold on a second. Let's fix that. I don't know what it is with these frame dips, but I'm dropping to 50. This is definitely not normal for this game. 50 frames, what the hell? Okay, so there's something happening while it's dropping. Let's see what we can do. Oh, I know why. It's not plugged in. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> it is not plugged in. There we go. 170 frames per second. That's much better. I was, I was going like, what? What is this dipping? That's not normal. So now it is plugged in. And now we actually will see some good performance numbers. So almost 300 frames per second, which is like the limit. Uh, 106, 270, 270 frames, 170. So it is very variable at the end. Like the further you go in the numbers. Like the higher up you go, the more variation there is. But we're hitting almost 300 frames per second here, which is nothing to scoff at. Can't believe I just screwed that one up. Ah, so 200 frames per second, really comfortable. And the temperatures are hitting 90 degrees, which is uh, not ideal, definitely. It is pushing for that 99 degree limit. Whoa, okay. And that's because it's turboing and it shouldn't be tur turboing. So in this case, maybe disabling the turbo is a good idea. Let's do that. Let's disable the turbo over in throttle stop and continue playing. That was close. Ah! Lol. Well, that's unfortunate. <laughs> I 
Again, 150 frames right now. So disabling the turbo, did it help? Yes, it did. It is now at a nice 75 degrees. So I think maybe that is the solution to get like a low, or just disable the turbo and you'll get like 70 degrees ish instead of the higher numbers. So disabling turbo is a recommendation. And there we go, finish first, 70 degrees. It doesn't boost clock anymore, it's stuck at two gigahertz, which is fine for this type of game. And we're still hitting 170 frames per second all over the place. And I finished first. So, talk about the scoreboard. 54 kills, 23 deaths, 611 score. I mean, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty awesome, right? <laughs> so there we go, uh, that is it. That is my testing for today. Let's sum it all up, shall we? Okay, everyone, so hopefully this has satisfied most of you with my testing. So let's summarize. We played The Witcher 3, and we had reasonably high temperatures at the start, but then it settled down once it started to just hang around without the boost clock. It would just start hanging around the 70 degree mark. And that's a trend that we saw in every single game. Disabling the turbo is your best bet because turboing, just allowing it at all, makes no sense in a game where everything seems to be just constantly stable. So it doesn't need to turbo, but somehow it thinks that it needs to when it really doesn't. So disabling the turbo is your best bet when it comes to low-ish, decent, straight perform performance lines. So when you go and play CSGO, for example, you do see a difference because when you disable the turbo, while the temperatures are significantly lowered to 70 degrees rather than, or even 60 degrees, rather than the 90 degrees that you would hit otherwise, you do get a higher frame rate, a much higher frame rate. So with the 1650 in combination with the 97050H processor that's inside this Dell XPS 15, when it turbo boosts the four gigahertz, you will see frame rates that go to the 300 frames per second mark, which is the maximum you can get in CSGO, 300 frames per second. Now, that is all nice and good, but the second you start to disable that turbo, it clocks down to like 170 frames per second, which is nothing to be sad about. It is still pretty darn amazing, and you could alter the settings if you want to as well. Remember, my settings are quite high, so take it with a grain of salt, but mostly the performance is really, really well. And uh, when it comes to Grand Theft Auto V, mostly high temperatures, but it, a little bit higher. Once it started to clock down to that two gigahertz mark and it like, or three gigahertz mark actually, when it was like just sitting at a stable position, it was like 80 degrees or so, which is nothing to scoff at again. It is reasonable within the margin of error and it doesn't thermal throttle at that point. Um, but then again with games, you have to consider that thermal throttling really is not that big of a deal because with gaming, when it comes to thermal throttling, it will clock down to a more like reasonable position for the processor itself. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that the power which you give to the processor isn't always best used. It isn't just like all sunken into the processor and just like uses all of that. It doesn't need to most of the time. And in that case, you can it can clock itself down. I will allow it to clock itself down because it doesn't need to. It doesn't need to clock itself up. We don't need the 300 frames per second. 144 is plenty. And I mean, this doesn't even have a 144 Hertz display, but then again, if you do require that 144 Hertz or more frame rate, just lower the settings a little bit. And of course, live with the fact that if you do enable the turbo, it's gonna have consequences. Lowering the turbo or the power uh, limit for that matter, I wouldn't necessarily recommend because you should just turn off the turbo altogether when it comes to gaming. It should not turbo in a game because turboing is only for a brief amount of time. It is not continuous. 
it cannot turbo for long periods of time. Intel processors just don't do that. So my solution really is, is just disable the turbo altogether. Stay at that nice firm grip on the same gigahertz all the time and just start tweaking settings. And with all this, all the games that I've tested right now, GTA, Witcher 3, and CSGO, you can see amazing performance numbers. You can see amazing performance numbers when it comes to Witcher, which is a very intensive game in the cities as well as in the forest, in crowded areas or normal areas. And when it comes to CSGO, highest frame rates you can ever get and it's still within reach 160 frames per second when you have the turbo disabled even and when you enable it you can crank that up to double and with the Grand Theft Auto 5 you get 60 to 70 or 80 ish to, uh, uh, frames per second and you still get awesome performance out of it with reasonable temperatures so it is not something I would be that worried about and with throttle stop use, I mean, the only thing I could really say is good while gaming when using it is to disable the turbo. Do not mess around with the clocks. I mean, it has a slight difference maybe, but nothing noticeable. So if you're scared of that sort of thing, you know, just stay away from that. Disable the turbo and that's your best bet. If you, for some reason, see differences in your system when you underclock it and it works, sure, stick by them. There's no harm in underclock or undervolting because... It generally only means good, lowers the battery consumption, lowers the usage of power, and reduces heat. That's what it really is supposed to be doing. But I don't notice that much of a difference that much at all by myself. So hopefully you find these numbers interesting nonetheless and learned what you needed to learn. So hopefully this is to give you a lot of information about the turbo boosting, about the uh, some throttling that is on the system with the way it handles games, the frame rates that you get, the performance that you get, the thermals that you get, and how it's all pretty stable and nicely handled if you are in ultra performance mode in the Dell Power Manager. It didn't keep the temperatures once it was in optimized, although I have not tested yet optimized with the turbo disable. Maybe that's something for you to try out. Anyhow, thank you guys for watching. It's going to be a longish video, I think, but I'll do my best to edit it in a nice way as possible. Nicest way as possible. So thank you for joining me. Hopefully you liked it. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.